Hi again, this is Nancy Ash, and this is our fourth video. And this time I'm going to show you a picture of both Carrie and Mosaic. And here's Mosaic wearing her boots under saddle. And I do notice her hind feet have a nice 30 degree angle. And I also notice that she's carrying her rider pretty well. But she does have her head kind of low. And sometimes when a horse will carry her head low like this, if she's not totally in balance, she is protecting her feet. Because she's wearing boots, we know that her feet are hurting just a little bit. But she's a Nice little mare, looks like a happy owner too. Here we are again at Mosaic's left front foot and we noticed when we trimmed it in the previous video that this foot seemed to have a bit of a flare on the medial side and if that is true, that flare should show up on the volar side or the side where you see the sole. Here we go, it does show up. You can see if you were to draw a line, a median line that goes right through the center of the hoof that this section of the hoof here is slightly larger than that section. And that's because this bar, which had bent or buckled, is actually pushing this wall outward with every step. It's also doing some damage internally. You can see in this area here and here and here that there is some bruising. The reason that bruising is occurring is that the bar, which should have ended just about here, perhaps a little further back, has actually wandered off into what we call sole land. This should be sole, not bar. Sole is a less hard material than bar. Bar is actually the hardest material in the hoof. That bar material has wandered off into this area where the navicular bone is sitting. So what's happening is the poor sole and soft tissues between the sole and the navicular bone and the coffin bone is getting squeezed between a rock and a hard spot. And generally, the bleeding of the soft tissue is right around here, but it migrates to this area here. That's what's making this horse's hoof sore. This bleeding or impinging of this hard material onto the soft tissues at the back of the foot are causing pain. And that's why the horse doesn't want to stand on the back of its foot. And that's why its muscles are tensed when it's standing, because it's actually trying to stand on its tiptoes. We have this evidence of flaring on this foot, and we also have evidence that the bars are too high with the bruising in the center of the foot. Now let's go to the next picture, and this is Mosaic's right front foot. And you remember that this right front foot has a considerable flare on the medial side. If that's true, that flare should show up on the volar photo. And guess what? There it is, right there. You can see that this bar here, instead of heading toward the center of the foot, is sort of heading off into nowhere land. And this bar is way tall, but it's not as bent as this bar. This bar is pushing this wall out. It's also pushing this wall out, but not as, as much as on this side. So what do we do about this? We've got to address the bars. And this is a very controversial and difficult portion of trimming. But without addressing the bars, Mosaic will not have comfort in her feet. Before we do that, however, we'd better trim this foot. And actually, it looks like a pretty good trim job. The only thing I see that needs to be done is to lower the heels, bring them back, just like we did on the, on the left front foot. So let's draw our baseline. There's a good periopal spot right there. And then go up and get our rectangle, down our shift, and draw a circle. That looks pretty good. Grab onto the circle and place it. See that the circle needs to be just a little bit bigger. And there it is. You'll notice that the trimmer has done a really good job. You notice that this foot is much rounder than the left foot. And so what's going to happen here is she's just going to rasp off a little bit of, of the uh, toe at a 90 degree angle. She's going to take down the wall and she's also going to have to rasp these heels down so that this section of the heel is brought back to here and this section of the heel is brought back to there. And remember that because the top of the heel is lying and pushed forward, when you lower it, it will bring itself back. Okay, we're ready to address the bars. 
On this foot especially, the bars have migrated out of bar land into soul land. And when bars migrate onto soul land, bad things happen. We saw bar overlying the soul right here. I think we also saw it right there. You can see that it's sitting on top of the soul. It's sitting on top of the soul here, right here. And you'll also notice that this foot is very flat. Now that's typical of horses that have come out of shoes, especially when their feet have done what mosaics did, push the heels so far forward. And we've got a little bit of work to do to take off some of the material covering the sole on this foot. And this is the place where part of the time you're going to take a long time to do it, and part of the time you're going to do it right away. So let's start with the right away part. The place where we're going to make a correction right away is in this area here and this area here where the bar is. And I want you to remember that the bar comes from the lateral cartilage and the lateral cartilage ends right about here. Matter of fact, you see these little cracks in the sole? That's about where the lateral cartilage ends at the bar ends. And because the foot flexes, it makes a crack right where that hard material should end and the soft material should begin. Since we we would have trimmed this foot and the heels would be back here, we need to know exactly where the bars need to go. And what they do is they start at the top of the heel and they progress precipitously down the heel like this and like this. And they're wide, as you can see. Matter of fact, I'm going to make them a little wider so you can actually see what a bar looks like. The bar width is about the same width as the very tip of your hoof knife, where the curl is. And here's how you're going to proceed when you take this bar both over and down. Now you remember, just as the heel did, if you were to scrape off this portion of the bar right here, it would automatically move over like that. And it would also move down like that. And as you scrape, more and more of the bar off of the sole, at one point it will come to where it belongs, but it'll still be too high. At that point, what you do is you stand your knife up on its end and you begin to scrape just on the top of the bar like this. And as you scrape, you'll lower and lower and lower until you get it to be about at this angle. Now, most of the time, you can actually see a spot on the bar where the bar wants to be. It'll be a little line. As a matter of fact, just as the hoof wall has lines, so does the bar have lines. And what you'll see is a line that starts at the bottom and then comes and meets just about at the top of the trimmed heel. Just above that, about an eighth of an inch, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, that's where you want to stop. And your bars will sort of look like this. First of all, they'll be here, and then they'll move over, and they'll move over, and they'll move over until they look just about like that. And that's where you stop. What's really occurred is that with every step the horse took, this bar was pushed down into the internal structures of the foot. There's a lot of soft tissue. As a matter of fact, the whole back part of the hoof is just soft tissue. It's frog and lateral cartilage and digital cushion. As the bar pushed and pushed, the soft material was between a rock and a hard spot. That's what's hurting the horse's hoof. So as you scrape this away, what's going to happen is that bar at its bottom, where it got pushed up into the internal structures, will begin to relax and come back down. So you may have to do this process more than once. You'll also have to address these issues. But you're going to do that over time. My mistake that I made when I first did bar is that I trimmed the whole thing down to this level. What you want to do is you want to move the bar over till it's where it belongs. It'll still be too tall. Once it's moved over, instead of digging out the sole, you will just try to dig out or scrape off or lower just the top of the bar. And you know you've gotten to the top of the bar when the bar looks like the wall looks. It'll have on its outside, which is here, it will have pigmented wall. In the middle, it will have unpigmented wall. And right on the interior, it will have the white line, which is actually not white, but yellow. 
on the left foot, you're going to go through the very same process. The bar is leaning over here. You'll scrape it till it moves over to the spot where it belongs, and then you'll begin to lower it. Same here. Move it over to where it belongs and move it down by scraping its top. After that, then you're going to have to deal with the rest of this. If you have embedded bar, like a bar pool right here, you're going to have to take that away slowly because underneath of this are soft sole tubules. But you'll discover that once you get these heels and bars where they belong, your horse's foot will begin to correct itself because when the horse strikes the ground, it's actually going to be striking it in the correct way. And the correct concussion on the hoof actually builds a balanced hoof. And concavity will start to occur. More of this will pop off. You will be scraping and popping off more and more of the bar and keeping these, these bars here intact. And you'll be taking this bar material off. I hope that's the end of my advice for Mosaic. I hope it's done some help. Looking forward to seeing what happens in the future. So bye-bye.